Alright, hello everyone. This is going to be a tutorial series on Gossam Blurs and hopefully I'll make <coughs> a whole playlist on this topic. This is just going to be the first one, kind of an overview of the algorithm I'm going to implement. It's not going to be the fastest, it's just going to teach you the basics of a Gossam Blur so that if you want to implement this in OpenGL or some other graphics API, you'll understand how the algorithm works and you'll understand how to optimize it yourself. But this is going to be a brute force, get it done for our understanding. Now what is a Gaussian Blur? A Gaussian Blur is just a type of blur that makes less resolution for the image by taking the weighted average of all the neighboring pixels around it given a radius. And if you don't know what that means then here's an example of what it looks like and that you'll understand how to implement it by the end of the series. Here's before, original image, and here's after. You can see that this is the formula for a one-dimensional Gaussian bell curve, and the key variable is A, because you'll see why that's important later. You can see when you graph this function using different numbers for the A variable, the normal distribution changes in height and length. However, our Gaussian blur is going to take in a two-dimensional derivation of this uh, function, and you can extend this idea. Rather than taking in one variable for the function, an x, we're going to be taking in an x and a y, and essentially that z component, if it were to be graphed, that would be our Gaussian weight. The lower it is, the smaller effect it would have on the central pixel the weight is applied to. Just know that that two-dimensional Gaussian function takes in an x and a y, and that will return our weight. The first thing we need to do to actually set, start setting up and preparing for the blur, we need to create a matrix to store each of the weights in, and the weights are assigned depending on the coordinate in the matrix. This will be our two-dimensional array. Notice how each element in our two-dimensional array has a coordinate. That coordinate will be passed in as parameters to the function. That function will then return the Gaussian weight, and that is how our weight matrix will be set up. The number below the coordinate would be the weight value for this uh, 5 by 5 matrix. Now that we have the weight matrix calculated, we need to normalize the data in the matrix so that each element, if you were to add them all together, would be 1. This way we have the values be in proportion to one another. The value in the middle will have the most influence, while the values on the outside farthest away would have the least amount of influence on what the color of the pixel will be. Since the values are now normalized in the weight matrix, we can multiply them by one of the color components inside the image. Example, let's try and see what would happen if we were to take the coordinate 2020 on this image and sample it from our Gaussian blur weight matrix. In this case, we are sampling a white pixel, so each color component would be 255. Now if you take the weighted average by multiplying the color components by the weight matrix's element, we'd get the color white because they're all 255, so the average weighted value would be 255. But if some of the outlying pixels were not white, like maybe we're sampling something from the that gray edge then we'd yield different results. Now that's essentially it, that's all you do to take the weighted average. But what if we wanted to sample something like 1, or a value closer to the outside, what would happen? The program would try and crash itself because we're trying to sample something that's outside of the bounds of the image. That's why in this image the Gaussian blur doesn't blur the full image, it just blurs the inside. There is ways to blur the edges and we'll be covering that later in the series. Alright, now we can finally start programming this algorithm in Java. I'm actually going to stop right here and upload the programming portion of this algorithm in the next video. But if you want to support the channel, you can support me on Patreon, give me a thumbs up, like and subscribe, and you can hear me next video.